Hi there, welcome to another one of our fantastic Shapiers Bloggers interviews. Today, we are joined with the absolutely fabulous Carmen from New Leaf Designs. <laughs> Carmen, it is such a thrill to have you here. Hi, Matt. Hey. <laughs> this is so exciting. It's always such a pleasure to connect with you. Always great to I see know you. It is. <laughs> How have you been, Carmen? I'm re- I've been pretty good. Yeah, I mean, life has been weird for all of us, but um, yeah, I'm still here in my studio. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So for, for the, the people that are watching this that might not necessarily um, know your work or, or discovering you for the first time, would you care just to explain a little bit about what exactly you do and, and who you are? Sure, yeah. So um, I am a crochet and knitwear designer. I have been going full time for a year and a half now. Best decision I ever made. And I think uh, the people that do know me, they might know me from my sock videos on YouTube. These are my simple toe up socks, or perhaps my, or probably my cozy moment shawl, which was a make along last year, last year, uh, for Scapius. And that was a huge success. And uh, I'm still seeing people cast on their cozy moments. And it's just so much fun to see everyone, um, you know, some, some are trying knitting for the first time and then knitting a lace shawl. Um, so yeah, that has just been really, really exciting. Absolutely gorgeous. What, what yarn uh, is, this, is this knitted in? This is Scapey's Whirl. This is actually a woolly whirl in the Kiwi Drizzle colorway. Lovely. And uh, yeah, it's just lovely drapey. Um, yeah, I just, we all love Scapey's Whirl. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly do. <laughs> it's really, really gorgeous. So, yeah. so um, knit designs, that's, that's clearly something that you're, you're massively involved in. Um, you also do crochet designs, of course. Yes, yes. Can yeah, my styles tend different. to differ a little bit. Um, so with knitting, I tend to go a little bit more intricate, like lace or color work. And with crochet, um, you know, I think of myself as more of a knitter. But uh, so with crochet, I tend to keep it simple, like uh, double crochets and just mindless rows. And yeah. Nice. Is there is there um is there a, a difference in terms of when you would pick up knitting as opposed to crochet, or is it just how you feel on the day? Or yeah, it's um I don't know. Like uh, in front of the TV, I like to to crochet because it's more mindless for me. Or I knit socks. Um, but um, if I really have some time to get into it, I prefer color work or lace or something that occupies my mind even more so that I can just fully relax, you know? Yeah, lovely. So, so this kind of crochet and knitting journey, um, you mentioned that you now do this full time, um, which is just fantastic. Can I ask how, how did it all begin? Like, where did you start and was the dream to go full time? Um, uh, wow. Um, it started quite a few years ago, I think over 10 years ago, maybe. Um, my mom taught me how to knit. Um, and I didn't really do anything with it then. Um, but then I went to, uh, China to study abroad for my, uh, China studies. And then, uh, she sent me some like Dutch, um, crochet kits, uh, and they were of Dutch treats like a tampus and a, uh, a roquewurst. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but, um, so, uh, a pastry and a sausage. Uh, mm-hmm. She sent me crochet kits of those, just you know, so I wouldn't get too homesick over there. And um, and I remember being so frustrated because one of the kits starts with a magic loop, and it's like I threw it in a corner. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but I persevered, and so. Um, Uh, I picked up crochet there and I started knitting more. Um, And then, um, right, I had a blog when I was studying abroad just to um, 
so to catch up my relatives. And uh, when I came back home, I missed blogging, mm. uh, but I didn't have any new travel adventures. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to write about my new hobbies, crochet and knitting. And that's when it started. So that was 2012. Oh, wow. Uh, when so, I started so my blog. A decade ago almost. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> And so when when did the um when did the kind of the desire to to turn this into into something you know um that going was full time is very you? recently yeah sorry uh that was very recently so um until a couple of years ago I didn't know what I was going to do for a career and um yeah I just started thinking about it and uh, I thought about opening a yarn shop slash cafe with my mom. Um, but then I realized that uh, I wouldn't have any more time for designing. And that's when it hit me like, oh, so that's what I want to do. Uh, mm. That's where my passion is. Um, and yeah, I, I made a plan to quit my day job. And here I am. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, that's so massively inspiring to to someone like myself who, um, you know, would love to do that also someday, you know, full-time designer is, is a dream for many. So, I mean, congratulations on that front. That's really Thank awesome. Um, designing though, was that something that na came quite naturally to you? Um, I presume you started um, with other people's patterns. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm hearing my cat. <laughs> <laughs> um she's quite vocal um so i've i've uh, always been interested in teaching people things so also during my my studies i was always explaining things to um to my other classmates helping them understand like uh i love to take something really difficult and to kind of simplify it to the easiest possible way to explain something and um and i love that as well about crochet and knitting so uh when i posted um uh, my first couple makes i think it was like a little crochet santa or something um and then people were asking me how i made it and i was like oh it's not <laughs> obvious to you <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because it was it was really really simple um but then i i thought okay i'll just take some pictures and um yeah i just went from there and then along the way i found how that um how i could improve my pattern writing style um yeah <laughs> Brilliant. and so your um your uh, blogging and designing um that's something you've been doing for quite some time but you're also of course one of the the shapers bloggers how did how did that come about in terms of you um becoming a blogger but also um did that then develop your 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 skills as a designer Have, has that supported that Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so um, I had been blogging for a couple of years, and then um, I uh, I started working for this Dutch knitting website uh, just to blog things for them, um, all in Dutch. Like um, uh, I would write one blog blog post for them uh, a week, and um, and they, I don't know how it started, but um, they were talking about how to get um, yarn sponsors. And I was like, well, you could ask Scapies because they're um, the oldest Dutch yarn brand and the most well-known around here. And, um, and they asked and, you know, they got, um, we all got uh, yarn sponsored by Scapies. And then, um, and I think because of that, they started noticing me that I was also using Scapey Steerance for my own blog. And um, yeah, a couple months later, I got a really nice email asking <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to be a Scapey's blogger. And I was like, am I dreaming? <laughs> like, oh, um, they're the kind of emails you want to be receiving, right? <laughs> Lovely. 
And so, so being a, a Shakespeare's blogger, um, may I ask how how does that support the the work you do? Are the, are the bloggers a, for those of the, the people that aren't aware, are the bloggers a um, kind of a supportive, creative hub for you or? Yes, yes. So we are, <laughs> excuse the pun, but we are a really tight knit group and uh, we just love hanging out uh, also in real life. And um, like once a year, we have the uh, Scapies Bloggers Days, uh, which is just really, really fun. Um, yeah. And um, so when I started uh, as a Scapies Blogger, I was still very much a student. And, um, you know, being sponsored by Scapius and just being able to um, say like, oh, I have inspiration for this project, and they and they say, okay, um, we'll send the yarn your way. That just uh, relieved me of so much um, like pressure because as uh, as a student, I wasn't really able to buy the yarns that I liked. Um, so it just um, it took that worry away so that mm -hmm. I could be fully creative and you know I could just explore that yeah. um, so yeah and then of course they they have a huge platform which has been really supportive for me um, brilliant it's so great you know seeing over on Facebook and Instagram of course on your on your personal Instagram but as well as the Shapiers Instagram seeing all of your great designs pop up um, so that's, and that's their cool. Facebook groups they are exactly. so much fun yeah do you, do you dip into the Facebook groups and get involved there when you when you're when you're yeah. doing your design? Yeah, once in a while. Um, I did that a lot when I had the uh, Cozy Moments make along last year. And um, I was a little worried because um, um, I think they are mostly crochet heavy, like uh, focused on crochet. So I wasn't really sure how my knitting project, and I'm quite an advanced knitting project. I wasn't sure how that would go over, but um, it was welcomed so warmly and people just, uh, they were so great. And uh, I really, really love that. Yeah. And really? I've been popping in every once in a while. Lovely. Since. I mean, it sounds like, and, and also from what I've experienced, it's such a supportive community for crafters. So it for really those is. of you that don't yeah. know it, please check out Facebook groups. Um, so Carmen, designing, blogging, vlogging, <laughs> podcasts, you do it all. Where where does the inspiration come from? Um, I take a lot of inspiration just from my surroundings, um, a lot from nature. Uh, I love plants. <laughs> I, I did spot the plants in the background. They're so yeah. cool. I have a lot of house plants and uh, a lot of plants in my garden as well. And um, I, I just, yeah, uh, my boyfriend is a biologist um, and he talks a lot about uh, you know, reptiles, amphibians, uh, bird species. And uh, my grandpa used to teach me a lot about plants. Um, like if if I got uh, stung by a stinging nettle, then he would say, oh, then you, you take this and you rub it between your hands and then, you know, and the stinging was gone. So, yeah, I've just been really, really um, inspired by nature and the colors like sunsets and mm. um, actually two of my um, I have two of my subtle sock designs okay. here. So I've published an ebook. Uh, last year, November, and these are with Scapius Our Tribe yarns, like Absolutely kind of the background, gorgeous, yeah. and Scapius Metropolis, which is the solid color. And these are inspired by, well, this is a like a flowing river. <laughs> you have to <laughs> kind of imagine it. But um, so this is wow. inspired by a flowing river, and this by just like pebbles in the um, like in shallow lakes and mm. like water bubbling up. Absolutely and gorgeous. I just love the subtle um, colors. And, and so, the so these these um, are very connected to your inspiration of of nature, yeah. as as you've just mentioned, and they yes. that really showcases um, the you know the connection in the design. It's just beautiful. Yeah. 
<laughs> and hence new leaf designs. I've just so, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, well, talk to me that about that actually a little bit. So new leaf designs. What what does the name and and mean to you, and and why the choice of the name? Well, um, one of my oh, my oldest followers will know that I was Crafty Queens before this, when I first started out as a skates blogger, and that was uh, because I have a lot of creative women in my family. They were my Crafty Queens, and uh, but after a while, I thought it was kind of um, yeah, I wanted a more grown up brand. Mm. and to turn a new leaf um so that's one part of the meaning but also i'm just yeah um i love everything with nature i love um you know being as sustainable as i can possibly get like zero waste and uh just using things from nature um i love natural dyeing i love the patterns I see. <laughs> I mean, um, in the last um, yarn bookazine in uh, Mako Botanica, I have a shawl design. I don't have it here right now because we can certainly pop a picture up of it because this shawl oh. is gorgeous. Yeah. And it is called the Fibonacci shawlette. Yeah. We um, will pop a picture um, in right now. <laughs> great um because yeah fibonacci for those who don't know it um it's also called something golden gildesnade or i don't know a golden ratio mm. and um it's it's also kind of the spiral that you see everywhere in nature like how the little seeds in the sunflower just and how oh. how broccolis grow it's it's everywhere so yeah it just inspires me endlessly. Carmen, it's so great to hear how you've really connected your brand, your name to, to all of those things that inspire you. Um, yeah. and, and I really hear how nature is just so important to you. Um, now, I know you've mentioned in previous conversations um, that we've had about the, um, the, the place that you like to go, which happens to be um, mm -hmm. your grandfather's garden. Could you explain a little bit um, about that? Yeah, so I love having a big garden and uh, we are fortunate enough to have a small garden here. But uh, yeah, my grandpa's garden is just amazing. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's huge. It has a big willow tree with like lots of vines. We used to play Tarzan in the vines. Oh. It has a big walnut tree and uh, it just has kind of like a mini forest where we used to like build uh, tiny huts and <laughs> play in there um, and uh, yeah my grandpa has always uh, taught me a lot about plants and um, uh, and he used to go to like botanical gardens <laughs> take some seedlings or take some cuttings from there and plant them in his own backyard so it's quite spectacular in there uh, but of course um my interest uh, is always going to the plants that i can use for dyeing okay. so um i've actually prepared a little vlog for you um that will show how i you know the walnut tree in in my grandpa's garden and um and some yarn that i dye with those walnuts so amazing want to take I'm a look so excited to see this and also um also learn more about your your natural dyeing process so let's take a look at that video and and see what you get up to Hi everyone, it's a beautiful day and I'm here today in my grandpa's garden. Um, it is really big. <laughs> Let me just show you around for a little bit. Over there is a huge willow tree that we used to play under when we were kids. Big trees here as well. And over there is like a mini forest. We used to build huts and everything and pretend we were witches. And here is part of the house. And that is a walnut tree. And today I am picking some walnuts to see if I can get some brown pigment from that 
and I am not picking the walnuts as you can find them in the store um, but I'm picking them with the green shells still around them let me show you so here's one and here's another one and so this is already a little bit decomposed but you can see that the shell turns color and usually you know in water it, it turns a bit brown so I'm going to find a couple more and do some natural dyeing so I'm cutting up the walnuts and with some oops with some you can see how the actual walnut is developing <laughs> I'm cutting them up so it will be easier for um, the dye extract to come out and then I will cover them with water and I will check on this in a couple days okay so here are the walnuts after a couple of days you can barely see them because the water has turned so brown so I'm very excited for how this is going to work in the dye pot it goes I'm chucking the walnuts in and then probably adding a little bit more water and I'm going to heat it up a little bit so that we can extract even more dye stuff from the walnuts and then we'll strain them and put the yarn in All right, it's the next day now, so I'm going to open the dye pot and see what the yarn looks like. Ooh. Okay, it's cooled off. It's looking really beautiful. I'm loving the color. So you see that the wool yarn has taken the color a bit darker than the merino. So let's rinse these off and let them dry. And here is the result. These are the walnut dyed skeins. And let me just show you the difference between these two. I'm not sure if it really shows up. Um, but for me, this one is a little bit more red and the one closer to me is like more yellowy or more camel colored. And that's because this one is the wool one and this one is merino. And the merino base that I have takes the color a little lighter. And I've also split them into some smaller skeins and I'm going to be doing some more dyeing. So I'm going to layer another color on these and um, I'm going to do that with cochineal. So I have some cochineal bugs right here and cochineal are, yeah, bugs. Um, they are cactus beetles from Mexico, I think, or South America. Um, and they are really tiny and I'm going to soak them in some water first and then repeat the dye process. I've soaked the cochineal in this water and it's only been in there for like an hour but already you can see the dye extract coming out. So I am going to be using this on the walnut yarn to see what color we get. I've added some water in the dye pot and the walnut skeins are in here. And the cochineal 
water is now very saturated, so I'm going to add that. And then I'll heat it up and let the yarn absorb the new color. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, or at least that I have been waiting for, the result! I have my walnut and cochineal dyed skeins here, and you saw the walnut, which is this on um, wool base, and slightly lighter on merino and now we have the merino base with some cochineal which is just slightly pinker can you see barely slightly pinker than the walnut but for wool let me show you look at this it is actually very, very red, and I love it. So look at these four different colors, although these are all very similar, but still, they're all different, and all from two dye baths. And it's just, the result is not what I expected. Um, but that's what makes natural dyeing so interesting for me. It's different every single time. That was just so beautiful, Carmen. The garden looks spectacular. Um, so I can really see why that conjures up such inspiration and, and, and fond memories as well. Now, in the video, we saw um, the, um, the walnuts that you were collecting um, and using for, for dyeing. Um, now, the whole natural dyeing process is something that I don't really know that, that much about. Um, and I know it's something that you've been um, experimenting in for quite some time now. Would you mind to explain a little bit more about that and, and what you enjoy about it? Yeah, sure. So um, I've been natural dyeing for about two years now. Uh, two years ago, I went on this amazing workshop. Uh, like three days long and we dye a lot of colors and um and we have this color wheel and one of the colors in there is walnut so um this one so it's it's a huge rainbow oh my colors. look at that and you wouldn't expect all of these colors to be possible from nature they're um, all 100 they're totally natural Yes. Yeah. Wow. And, um, so these are all dyed with indigo, which is a little, little more difficult to get. So usually, uh, what I dye here at home is more of the yellow tones and uh, pink. I love pink. Um, and with walnut, you can also get a really pretty pink, um, as you saw. So, um, so. Here, this is what we dyed during the workshop um, mm. uh, and with walnut. So usually with natural dyeing, you need a mordant uh, that will allow the, it's kind of like uh, okay. so that the color sticks to the uh, the yarn, the fiber. But uh, walnut, because it has tannins already in there, uh, same with avocado and um wine also uh so the tannins act as the glue so you don't need um any alum prepping of the fiber uh and then it gives this lovely and lovely uh caramel shade and then if you over dye it so put it in another dye bath you get this beautiful pink and i love this dusty pink so so both um, of these shades you're showing right now they're they're both from walnut Yes, so uh, this um, was looked like this at first, but then we left this one alone and we put this one in another dye bath and it turned wow. out pink. So it's just, you can get such a variety of colors if you, uh, you know, not only with the like separate ingredients, but also if, if you then combine it. So I really, really love that. And um, this um, this summer, actually, I've been experimenting a little bit more. 
Okay. Um, uh, I was, uh, we have this wildflower mix in the garden, right? So uh, we have lots of daisies, uh, but this year we also had a lot of poppies. Okay. And um, I, <laughs> I read this magazine um, that you can make ink from poppies. And it was just so inspiring to me. Okay. Um, because wow. uh, I had never learned about poppies, like the poppy petals um, that you could use them for natural dyeing. So <laughs> immediately I was like, what? <laughs> The possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I collected a bunch of leaves. Um, I made sure that, you know, uh, I only picked those that were on the ground because they only bloom for like a day. So I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I'll let them have their day. Um, <laughs> and then, so here I have a jar of poppy ink. Oh Look how red gosh. that is. Wow. Isn't that exciting? So, uh, yeah, this is a uh, poppy petals and okay. um yeah and some citric acid which um yeah so can i ask you are the are the petals soaked or are they are they pressed to a pulp or um i uh i just poured some water over them and when i made the ink it was super hot so i just left uh, a jar uh, with a lid on outside, um, and that's called solar dyeing. You, you kind of use the sun as your dye pot, <laughs> okay. uh, as your heat source, and uh, and then afterwards, you know, the the leaves or the petals they have all turned pale, so I uh, strain them out, and then what was left, um, I dyed some yarn in there that I blend right here, and then I reduced it until an ink so wow. <laughs> but the yarn isn't as spectacular okay uh because it uh it turned a very very pale pink but still a very very subtle it. pink but but gorgeous yeah. isn't wow. that fun? the thing that um, fascinates me from what you're showing is just how um like unknown the the process appears like you it's kind of exciting you just don't know what's gonna happen yeah exactly it's, it's a surprise every time and then um so this is what the color turns out on uh on yarn and mm. then the ink you know looks really red yeah, um, yeah so then i try to uh do a little bit of painting and this is my look at that i mean the ink is the most vibrant vivid yeah. color Wow. Isn't that exciting? So I'll just show a little close up. So I just uh, did a little bit of a splotch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was just really, um, yeah, easy, easy peasy painting. And then the day after when I was dry, I went over again with a black pen. Um, wow. And I love it. I it's love it's it. fantastic, I really. I mean, yeah. How can you not be inspired by it? My nature is well, I certainly am now, that's for sure. Yeah. It fascinates <laughs> me. <laughs> so you you've been um as you've said, you've been experimenting with um natural dyes and creating your own natural dyes. Um I also see the avocado plants. Is that an avocado plant in the background or is that your mango? This is the mango plant. Oh, it's a mango. I thought maybe that's your avocado plant and you're gonna use that to dye in in 15 <laughs> years when you grow some little avocados. <laughs> That's so cool though to see the mango plant in the background. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you've been experimenting with all of um, your your natural dyes. Um, what else have you been experimenting with? Because I know for a fact that you have a, a few other little projects going on at the moment, haven't you? Would you care to share <laughs> Just with a us? few. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> Just a few thousand. <laughs> um, well, um, I don't know if you heard about the Tour de Fleece. The what? <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> the Tour de Fleece. Tour de Fleece. Um, what is this? Yeah. Not Tour de France, although it does have a connection. So it's um it's basically um a spinning uh event, yarn spinning. Yeah. And um so 
I love yarn spinning, but I need some motivation to get back into it because it's not something that I do on a daily basis. Okay. Um, but then each year, uh, together with the Tour de France, so it's like June, July, um, mm. there is the Tour de Fleece. Um, and yarn spinners from all around the world, you know, they spin yarn and then post pictures and photos of that uh, and um, videos on social media. And it just gets me so motivated to spin some yarn myself. And uh, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of spinning this year. Okay. And um, I'm actually, I'm working on some socks at the moment. So this is some yarn that I spun. No way, is, it, is, is this yarn you've dyed as well? No, it's not dyed by me. It's, okay. uh, it was a, uh, yeah, run at so mine. It, so, it, so it's like, it's the kind of woolen, the, the fleece as such. Is that what you call yes. it? Yes. Fleece, woolen fleece. And then, um, and then I spun it into three mm. different strands and then okay. I spun those together. So that's why you see the kind of barber pulling effect. Oh, I see. Like, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll do a little close up. Yeah, and then um, I'm knitting that and into something. They're already and... turning into some wonderful creations. <laughs> wow. And um, yeah, so the Tour de Fleece is like, um, you might wonder like why uh, the connection to Tour de France. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, because if you're spinning yarn, you're also like pedaling and a wheel is turning so i think that's where the connection is um and it runs for as many days as the tour de france and on the more challenging days i think the the mountain days they call it okay. then you choose a more uh challenging project for yourself and that's <laughs> fantastic it's it's so fun. I even know like a yarn shop close to Bristol actually um that um they have their own um true fleece team and um they had knitted small like you know how they have the yellow sweater and the sweater with the uh, circles on it. I don't yeah. know the English terms, but so they knitted small decorations of that to hand out. <laughs> so fun. Um, what a great idea. So what I had as a challenge for myself this year, um, when the uh, Tour de France was running, was to prepare some of my own fiber. Okay. Um, and I have some of that fiber right here. <laughs> Look at that in the pot with hands <laughs> sticking out. It's so great. <laughs> you remember the little troll puppets? Uh, yes. Back in the day? Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is yeah. all. Um, it's from yarn scraps that I collected over the past few months. Okay. Um, I have a big bag of yarn scraps. So, so, so these are just just bits of yarn that didn't quite get used, or potentially yes, the ends um, that were cut off. The ends, yeah. When, okay. So when I leave the ends, and uh, I just started saving them them up. What a great <laughs> and idea! As you do, I might use them someday. You know, yeah. I'm always uh, thinking that. So I have a bunch of yarn scraps, most of which are Scapies Metropolis. Uh, okay. Hint, because some of my um, future patterns are all using Scapies Metropolis. Oh, um, are these, is this part of your future patterns? <laughs> it is. <laughs> this is a huge project coming out next year. Ta da! I cannot wait to see what that will be. Wow. <laughs> little sneak peek. Um, and then, so, um, so I use these combs. Okay, so are they like animal combs? Or? Yes, uh, because you have uh, professional carding combs, but um, they are super expensive. Okay. So, um, yeah, I was like, oh, the, the comb that I use for Momo, Momo's fur is like similar. Yeah. So I just bought another set. And um, so what I do is, you know, I took some of the scraps and um i categorize them by color <laughs> and then uh it's, it's a very lengthy process but it's fun um i kind of tease the plies apart okay 
and and then I comb it and then <laughs> that is so, fantastic so you're you're yeah. using things that would usually you know potentially be thrown yeah. in the bin yes yeah. saving them and literally giving them a new lease of life yes wow. so uh, that is how I made all of these and um yeah and so uh, can this be done with with any type of yarn or it has to be like a natural a natural um, uh, I made sure to save uh, only uh, woolly fibers such as Scapies yeah. Metropolis. There are some uh, Scapies Downtown in here as well. Mm. Um, acrylic could work because it's also, you can tease it apart and it gets a little fuzzy. Okay. But um, I haven't put cotton in there or, yeah. So it's mostly it's mostly wool, yeah. Okay. And I also have a little clip of me spinning some of this. Do you want to see? Oh, you, I would love to see. Yeah, <laughs> let's take a look. I have been prepping some fiber. So these are all yarn scraps that I have blended with my um, animal fur combs. And to get fiber, it looks like this. And I have my spinning wheel right there, and we are going to try spinning some of this recycled fiber. And here is the end result. Ta-da! Isn't it pretty? So Carmen, that was just so great to see. Um, and it really is so very inspiring to see that you've basically recycled the, the bits of yarn that people would normally be throwing away. Um, so, you know, You've got more yarn to potentially use, but also you're doing a great thing for, for the planet. Um, once again, though, you've used um, Metropolis yarn, which I know is a favorite of yours, also mm -hmm. mine. Um, and I can't even like let this slip by without mentioning the absolutely gorgeous sweater that you're wearing. I mean, it is absolutely stunning. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this also Metropolis? Yes, of course. I it is just as much. It's my favorite yarn. It's it's just so versatile. Mm. I mean, you can use it for socks, shawls, sweaters, amigurumi, pillows, you know. Absolutely lot. gorgeous. <laughs> and it comes in so many colors, of course. Now, this sweater that you're wearing is a vast array of colors. Could you could you talk to me about that? Because I don't know if you know, 
Well, actually, you do know because you actually got me started. I have recently taken up knitting. Yay! I'm a crocheter, but I am dabbling in knitting at the moment. And I've just made my first jumper. Um, it's very basic, but I would love to be able to create something like this. So would you mind just sharing exactly um, what this is as a, as a garment in terms of the, the color choices and also the, the style of knitting? Because I see there's lots of color changes, right? Yeah, and I mean, yeah, it uses a lot of colors and you can totally do this because I saw you were knitting natural. <laughs> wow. and, um, especially with the continental knitting as it is kind of like crochet, how you, um, mm. how you hold your yarn. Um, and this is, well, if you know how to knit a sweater, then you can totally knit this sweater. It's just one step up the, uh, the okay. ladder. It's, um, so this is my around the world sweater. Yeah. I have the same sweater in a different color palette right here. Look at that. Um, it's just so and, stunning. And these both use, uh, Scapies Metropolis. So this uses the Scapies Metropolis color pack that has all 80 colors. Okay. Um, and I made sure I, I haven't used all of them because yeah. um, I'm tiny and <laughs> I didn't need all of the all of the yards. But um, uh, for this one, I used just seven or eight colors. Um, so you can do that with the 50 gram balls as well. Mm, and okay. um, so many people get and find color work knitting a little bit daunting, which yeah. I understand, um, but really it's just, knitting with two colors at the same time. I knit one of the colors in continental style and one of them in throwing style. Um, mm -hmm. But you can also hold two threads in your left hand or both threads in your right hand. It's just what you're most comfortable with. Okay. And, um, and if you want to know how to do this, I mean, well, I, I really do, because as I said, like I have just started, but I'm so inspired and to create something like, like the sweater that I see, it's my so only funny. problem is I don't know where to begin. And I, I do find it daunting. So any, any tips for where I could begin or, or viewers who are what? watching this? <laughs> I do, have a, <laughs> I do have a color work course for beginners. So um, you you need to know how to knit, but you don't need any color work experience. Um, mm -hmm. I have some samples here for my color work course, which is called Color Work Confidence. I and love that color work. We confidence. start out with this one. Um, so we start out with a very simple pattern. And before we even start, I'm showing you like how to choose colors because you want to choose a color palette that really shows off your pattern and not see here, it kind of, um, it, it's not really visible, but yeah. in, in the, the other ones, it is much more visible, mm -hmm. um, which stitch pattern I have chosen. Yeah. So first of all, we go through all of that. And then um, I show you the different ways of holding your yarn. So you can choose which one is more comfortable for you. Um, and then we just, you know, go through a couple of uh, charts that are going to be increasing in difficulty. Oh, I'm holding it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the easiest one. Then this one is a little bit more difficult and then we just progress. And then uh, I show you some more uh, techniques along the way. Fantastic. And then, uh, and then we move on to this one where I show corrugated ribbing. So this is actually ribbing. Okay. You might be able to see the pearl bumps in there. Yeah. Um, and here I have actually used three colors in one row, uh, which is also really fun. And it's a little bit uh, more advanced. So mm. in this course, we really go from beginner to advanced techniques. Okay. And um, so all, yeah. you, all you need for this course is um, initially you need to know how to, to do kind of a basic knit and purl stitch. Yes. Yes, you need to know how to cast on, how to knit, and how to purl. Really? Um, yeah, and then you're all set. So I have this course 
Um, and I have a course for this sweater as well. So in that, um, so the first one is called Colorwork Confidence Masterclass. Yeah. And this one, I think it's called uh, the Sweater Cow Masterclass. Okay. Uh, now this, this, is this sweater my... is, um, it's, it's a free design if I'm correct, right? Yes, yes, it's a free pattern. Wow, um, free pattern, yep. Just amazing. <laughs> um, and it's it's in a whole variety of sizes, and um, and yeah, so that was kind of a journey for me as well to calculate it for all the different sizes. But um, so it's it's a yoked sweater, which means okay. um, uh, well, not all the yoked sweaters start at the um, neck, but for this one, you start with neck ribbing, and then you go down and like increase every few um, stripes. And then at the uh, arms, you split, I am showing you on the other one. Um, so, so starting here, at, at, the, at the top of the neck, and then it moves yeah. down. Yeah, you start at the top okay. of the neck. And then um, you knit in the round. Yeah. And then after this like lilac stripe here yeah. um i split for the sleeves and for the body and all of that uh i'm showing in the sweater um in the sweater master class so everything from casting on for ribbing to increasing also a little bit of color work refresher um short rows for the back because you want the back of the sweater to be a little bit higher yeah yeah just so your neck doesn't get cold um yeah so everything so is not included. only are you a fantastic designer not only are you dabbling in yarn spinning dyeing all of that you are also a fantastic resource for people that are wanting to de to develop their skills thank you <laughs> I, I mean it's just insane it's really insane what I'm particularly interested in asking you, actually, though, is you've got so many kind of, so many things going on, right? You've got your courses, you're designing. Where do you put it all? Like, how do you manage to keep all that inspiration in, like, in your head? Like, do, is, there, is there a way that you um, draw your inspiration and like to document your inspiration? Yeah. Um, I mean, the trick is that I don't keep it all. <laughs> Oh, I see. <laughs> so I I have two notebooks and yeah. one of them is well I have a lot of notebooks but um <laughs> one of them uh this is actually a Kohana notebook just a and gorgeous, it is, gorgeous, um great, it? they are a knitting brand so <laughs> they know what we like um and this is it's very light, but uh, you can see that it has like little uh, a little grid. So um, actually, these this pattern might not be very visible. I see. But that is this pattern. Yes. And uh, a lot of the sweater patterns are in here as well. And here is my leaf pattern Ta -da. look at that <laughs> so, is, is, so this, is this for you the kind of the process um drawing out the 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 design on paper first before you yeah then... so at first let me just grab my other notebook i have <laughs> a matching one because because <laughs> because of course you you need to have a matching notepad <laughs> yeah um, I'm just uh, skipping past the still secret bits. Um, let's I must see say, I'm I... very excited to to hear later in the year or next year um, about mm -hmm. these secret designs because who doesn't love a secret? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, actually, here I think it is. Yeah. So this is my around the world sweater. That's this one. Wow. So it started here um, and with a lot of different name suggestions, the Globetrotter sweater, the Voyager, the Cosmopolitan, the Urban Wanderlust, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> so it starts as a sketch in this book. And then I kind of work out 
um, the different color work patterns here. Yeah. Um, and I see like if they are, um, if they fit in the repeat, because uh, if I'm designing a sock, then uh, I want to have a four stitch repeat uh, because it gives, you know, you need to have a lot of um, flexibility for the sizes. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, and actually for the sweater, it's also all four stitch repeats. Okay. Um, so many people think that, you know, color work is going to be a lot of counting, but for this one, you only have to count up to four. So it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's very intuitive. And yeah, a lot of, let me see if I can find. Oh, yes. So if you can see this one yeah. right here, the blue one, that is this one. Oh, I see. Yes, I can spot that. Let me pull it up. Yeah. So, wow. um, yeah, I just, I really, really like this. And then, so first it is a sketch, then I work out the color work pattern um, and see if it's a multiple of four or six or eight. Um, and sometimes I color them in and, and then it becomes the actual item. So, That's, I mean, just, just fantastic to see, especially the development of the design so from initial kind of concept or, or brainstorm uh, maybe you'd like to call it a brainstorm I don't know um, but then moving it over to the kind of more specific and, and detailed version of the design process um, is really interesting to see um, finally just before we we go I know there was something else that I did I personally really wanted to ask you about because I had spotted it on uh, online um, you have also developed a course um for mending like yes. holes in your network and yeah, yeah, um, that's right. correct me if I'm wrong have you used crochet to <laughs> mend your knitting yes yes you, I, have. I, I mean I, this is amazing <laughs> so um I have a swatch right here yeah. <laughs> it's a big swatch um <laughs> this was a scarf that I then abandoned um but um I've tried some visible mending on here so here we have a little okay. weaving patch and here I have a little crochet flower so this, this was a big yeah. hole um here okay yes and then I you know I slip stitched on the surface and then crocheted the circle and then uh yeah I just I used mean just brilliant mostly so, slip stitches yeah okay so this isn't this isn't like um trying to mend a garment by concealing the floor this is like turning no. the floor into a into a feature yeah yeah wow I, I have another uh swatch that uh, is just a little bit more visible, but it's the okay. same technique. So I think you might want to see that um, because here, this is also uh, all Scapey's Metropolis. This is uh, Scapey's Sacred Garden. Uh, so here I went for a really pastel -y vibe. Yeah. I mean, like matches my wall. Cool. Um, but here I used a more autumnal uh, palette and you can really see the individual stitches. Um, yeah, and I use Scapey's Metropolis for mending too, because uh, it has a little bit of nylon in there. It's really okay. durable. Um, and most of the things I knit are out of Metropolis. Um, okay. But yes, I just, you know, embrace the flaw and then make it into something beautiful. And I this even, you don't need to have a hole <laughs> in your garment to put yeah. this on there. Yeah. Um, so yes, and this is included in the course. I have a lot of different um, techniques in there. And this is one of them. And Absolutely. actually, yeah. I'm also doing, I, I also have a chapter in there on uh, granny square mending. So, uh, you know, granny square blankets, uh, they're often heirloom items. And yeah. Uh, yeah. when I was making them, I would often worry about the, the magic loop, like unraveling somehow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or you know, moths getting in there. Yeah. Um, and I've just, yeah, I've <laughs> cut up some granny squares and then mended them again. So that's included in there as well. Wow, that's that's really useful because there's nothing, nothing worse than working on a project or inheriting a project 
that you know has a huge sentimental value and then seeing it kind of go downhill and feeling like you can't rescue it so i mean what a what a great resource you've put together um i'll definitely be checking that out <laughs> well carmen it has been so fantastic having a chat with you again um thank you i i had the best time <laughs> oh i just wish we could have done it in person but this is certainly yeah. the next best thing um so i really thank you for your time i know you're really busy with your design work so thank you for taking time out to join us today it was really thank you, thank you man so for those of you that would like to check out more of Carmen's work, you can check out her website at newleafdesigns.nl. And also don't forget, you can check out all of the other bloggers and the Shapiers friends at shapiers.com, as well as check out lots going on on the Shapiers Instagram account and Facebook community page. Hope you've enjoyed the chit chat. <laughs>